Hi, greetings, greetings everybody. Jean Allen here, your racial sobriety mentor, your racial wellness mentor. I'm just going to oh, get myself fired up on Instagram and okay so i'm not sure if i'm live on here but i think it should be all right so it's been a few days um yeah so for those of you that, that don't know i have just been so ill over the last few weeks and i'm still not 100 percent. but i thought i'd um i'm feeling a little bit better um today so I thought I'd jump on and uh, say hello and just let you know what's been going on and everything. So um, for those of you that have not been, um, that don't know who I am and have not been to one of my broadcasts before, my name is June Allen from JuneAllen.net and I teach um, non-white people how to heal from addiction to self-hate with racial sobriety, racial wellness and personal empowerment. So when we talk about racial sobriety and personal empowerment, we talk about um, the relationship that you have with your blackness, the relationship that you have with your melanin, all of that kind of stuff, um, which is very, very important because obviously we live under the system of racism. Hello. Oh, you can't hear me. Instagram, you can't hear me. Oh, no. Why can't you hear me? You'll have to excuse me a minute, Facebook. I don't know why. I cannot be heard. Because everything is plugged in. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I'm the life mechanic. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Can you still hear? Can you hear me or not? I don't know if... Um, let me see. Your volume is right up. But let me just check what mine is. Let me just check my, my volume is right up. Um, yeah, my speakers are right up, so why is it, why can I not be heard? That's so frustrating. Um, that is very strange. I don't know whether to just maybe end it and then restart, I might end it and then restart it and see if it's any better. Hi, Joe. Can can you can you still not hear me? Am I still? I might have to cut the thing off and then restart it again if it's not happening because um obviously you know it's important that you hear what's going on there. Um, I don't know what else is what else is going on. I might have to cut it off. I had to put my. Can you hear me with the with the earphones? If you can hear me with the earphones, then that should be okay. I would have thought. Uh, can you hear me, Joe? Let me just put a message in. Or am I? Okay. I'm still not getting any... I might have to restart it. Oh, so Joe can't hear me either. Right, I'm going to have to come out of this then and then I'll have to restart it because um, that's not on. That's not on. Uh, I can hear you through my headphones. That is weird. So you can both hear me through the headphones. You can hear me through the headphones, but not, not just generally. Uh, and I've got my microphone plugged in. Hi, Facebook. My microphone's plugged into there, so why is it not, um, oh great, so Astrid can hear me, that's great, hello Astrid, lovely to see you, I'm going to have to cut this off on, on, uh, Instagram and Facebook, and Instagram and YouTube, and I'll have to restart it, because, um, oh no, it's so annoying, I'm going to start, I'm going to cut it off and then restart it, alright, just give me a sec, and what I'll do is I'll refresh it, and then hopefully, Maybe I should come out of some of these, um, let me come out of some, I've got too many, you know what it's like when you're working, I've got too many app, too many things open, 
non non work stuff and um and personal stuff so let me just come out of some of these things and hopefully hopefully it will be a lot better so let me just come out of these okay so let me try again oh okay let me try again to go live and then we'll see what happens It might be a glitch or something with the um it's not letting me go live at all actually no. It's not letting me go live at all now. Okay, close the broadcast. Right, so let me try again and see what happens. Right, so I'm live again on here on Instagram and Facebook and we'll see what happens. So if you can't hear me anybody that's on Facebook or thing then they'll just have to um I'll just have to download it on um from Facebook and do it that way and see what happens so right so I'm going to get going so for those of you that don't know me my name is June Allen from JuneAllen.net and I teach non-white people how to heal from the impact of racism with racial sobriety and personal empowerment so today's topic is all about the 80 20 rule of healing um which is something that i learned about a few months ago and i what it was more related to business actually um then i thought to myself oh my god this can actually be applied this can actually be applied to healing process so i thought you know what let me let me do that and then we'll um because it's relevant, it's relevant, and it's you know it's something that I, a lot of people don't really think about, but I think it's gonna it will have a huge impact. So yeah, so um, for those of you that don't know what's been going on with me over the last sort of couple of weeks, I have been extremely ill. Um, I've had this really no, I've never been so ill with the flu in all my life. It was it just completely wiped me out, and on top of that, I blacked out as well in my kitchen and woke up with the cat kind of smelling my face. I don't know how long I was out for. All I know is that I just really struggled to kind of get up and do anything. I'm still not 100%. Um, but, you know, I found it difficult to kind of walk about and all the rest of it. But I'm, I am I'm feeling a lot stronger than I have been. Um, so I thought I'd jump on and, um, and kind of reconnect with everybody. Um, and just sort of, you know, say hi and, and just kind of try and get myself back into the swing of things again. So... Um, yeah, it does feel strange kind of coming back after such a long time, after a couple of weeks of not doing any live streams or anything like that. But I really needed to practice what I preach. I really desperately needed to practice what I preach and um, and do what I need to do. So I'm very, very grateful to be back. Um, albeit I'm not 100%, but it just feels good to just be trying to ease myself back into things. So um, before I get into uh, the topic and um, the details of the what the 80 20 uh rule of rule of healing is 80 20 principle of healing uh, i'm just going to go through some housekeeping so um the first bit of housekeeping is that the next book club the next uh sacred sister book club the sister circle is um next saturday the 2nd of march so we are studying bell hook sisters of the am which is a really great book um black women in self-recovery and the chapter that we are studying it's going to be all about racial stress. Hi, Rita. Nice to see you. It's all about racial stress. So we're going to be talking about, you know, the link between, um, you know, how we deal with this stress, how we deal with stress at work, you know, as it relates to racism. How do we deal with the stress around being around other black people if we've had a lot of abuse and a lot of, you know, difficult relationships with other black people and stuff like that. So, um Yes, yeah, so we're going to be talking about a lot of those things, which is going to be quite good. And I'm also, you know, you also get the opportunity to learn about different ways to help to reduce stress. Those are the types of things I'm going to be talking about over the next um, the next week or so, leading up to the um, to the uh, to the to the sister circle. So, hence today's you know class is really important because it's going to help you to really begin to understand some of these principles that are going to help you, um, you know, stay out of the stress and, and stay in the serenity. Um, which is really important. Okay, so housekeeping number two, 
Um, so right, so it's um, sorry. Just going back to the book the book club. It's five minutes from Bond Street in person. So if you can get there in person in London, um, it's five minutes from Bond Street. It's a really nice little space. It's like a little living room. Um, so yeah, it gives the ladies a chance to just hang out and and you know I have I make sure that the, the space is really calm. So we have really relaxing music and aromatherapy and all of that kind of stuff, which is really nice. It just helps to create a really nurturing space for people, which is great. Um, the other thing is that if you don't if you don't live in London or you can't get to the um, you can't get to the live event. Um, I do also um, do record reflections and what I call heart work. If you go to come to the live event, you get heart work as well anyway, where you, that's when you, um, I send you a PDF after the event with journal prompts and stuff like that so we can continue the conversation. There's also audios as well, because quite often what comes up in the sessions is that um, uh, people have questions and we obviously with time constraints, we don't always have the time to kind of go into detail about the certain different things. So the heart work is really important because you can continue the conversation on your own with your journal and also you get an opportunity to you can continue the conversation in the in the um, Facebook group that we have or in the WhatsApp group that we have as well. So it's not just something where you just show up at the live event and that's it. It's important to actually keep going with the um, with the work so that you can really flesh out not only how you feel about the topic, but what you can do to kind of nurture your, continue the nurturing process is there's stuff that you need to do on a daily basis or shift up your routines or whatever it is to make sure that what you're doing is is correct. Hi. Um, hi, Millie. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so Mo. Um, yeah, no, it's really good to, it's really good. It's, re it's a really nice little space. So if you can't make the actual live event, then you can come to the, um, you can get the reflections. If you go to the link, everything that I talk about will be in the link in the description. It's heal.juneallen.net. Um, so yeah, you can get your tickets there. If you go to the link in the description, there's, a, it will, there's another link in there that will take you to the Sister Circle page. And so you have the opportunity to either get the tickets live or you can actually um, get the reflections as well. So, so that's housekeeping number one. Housekeeping number two is Mother's Day is next month. And... Um, for a lot of people it can be really quite a painful time um, and there's not always the space to be able to have conversations about it there's not always the space to be able to talk about that stuff especially if you have a difficult relationship with your mum so um, what I did last year and what I'm going to be doing again this year is to create a space for um, women to be able to have conversations about challenges around their mum um, the, the workshops and stuff that I did last year I talked about boundaries I talked about you know the whole concept of being scared of turning into your mum and all of that kind of stuff so um, I'm going to be giving people the opportunity to work through some of that stuff again but it's going to be more from a self-parenting perspective so if you're interested in that I haven't actually um, you know been really really um, clear about what I want to teach first because I think I'm, I'm interested in what what you know I, what people are saying that they want me to you know what class they want me to set up so I'm thinking self-parenting kind of inner child type stuff which which is kind of the feedback that I'm getting at the moment but if there's stuff that you you know that you really want you know me to think about or what or, you know we'll do a, a class on around Mother's Day then um Register your interest if you go to the link heal.juneallen.net. That's heal.juneallen.net. That's heal.juneallen.net. There is a link in there that will take you to a page to put your email address in. Um, and then I'll obviously I'll realise, I'll know that you're interested in, you know, the workshop or whatever I do around mums. And then um, we can start the communication from there. So, yeah, or you could just DM me, actually, if you've got anything, if you want to DM me some some uh, stuff that you want me to talk about around Mother's Day and stuff like that, then obviously we can do that as well. So that's housekeeping number two. So for those of you that have just joined, my name is June Allen from JuneAllen.net, and I teach non-white people how to heal from the impact of racism, addiction to self-hate. Um, I teach racial wellness. You know, we live under the system of racism and um, it's important that we have specific ways to nurture our uh, cultural identity. So today's topic is all about um, the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule. So, um, hi, thanks for joining Mo. So nice to see you. We haven't chatted for a while. Um, yeah, the 80-20 rule. So the 80-20 rule, what is it? 
the 80-20 rule um, first came about from an Italian guy. Um, it's basically called the Pareto Principle. Some the guy's name is, is uh, Mr. Pareto, and he he basically discovered that 80% of the results that he had in his business was also related to um, was only related to 20% of his activity. Yeah, so 80% of the results came from 20% of the, st of the stuff that he was doing. But this is business wise. So basically, um, this, this, this was very, very significant because what's important to remember is the success that we have, be it in business or be it in personal or whatever, it comes from 20% of the choices that we make. So if you think about that, if there's only 24 hours in a day and, um, you know, you you really want that day to be successful. It's about you. Your your success from that day is only going to come from twenty percent of those of the things that you do during that particular day. So, what I find interesting about this this um, this this uh, principle is that you know what would happen if we really got clear on what the twenty what that twenty percent is and did more of that. We're going to have a lot more success. We're going to have a lot more happiness. We're going to have a lot more of um you know yeah we're just gonna have a lot more peace serenity all that if we focus on that 20 percent if we focus on that 20 percent so um to break it down what i've done is i've kind of um i've given i've written down some suggestions so if you've got your you know notebook or journal or whatever just jot down these things so that you can have you can refer back to it um as a way to really kind of flesh out what your 20 percent is so the first thing is, um, what are the things that you do during the day that's nurturing? What are the 20% of the things that you do on a daily basis that really help you feel good about yourself? For me, it's things, it's really basic things like sleep. Sleep is probably, yeah, sleep is one of the top things. And I don't always sleep that well. I've, you know, I've had so much sleep over the last couple of weeks since I've been ill because you know, because this thing kind of forced me into a situation where I uh, this flu really needed to um I had to like I had to rest it was almost like that, my higher powers way of saying you know well you have been working too much you have been doing a bit too much and and the only way that you're really gonna take notice of what I'm saying is if I knock you over with this flu so um yeah, so, and I was able to get, just get a lot more sleep and just generally a lot more rest, which has been so helpful because I think I was pretty burnt out before I even got this flu. Um, but yeah, so so sleep is for, for me is, is really important. Um, and also, you know, things like solitude, you know, what are, the, what are the things that I'm doing on a daily basis that nurtures my ability to be, to have quiet time, you know? mornings and before you go to bed are two of the really key areas um in terms of you know connecting with yourself you know what are the what are the things that you do first thing in the morning especially if you've got children do you kind of dive out of bed and just start running around or do you give yourself a sort of you know half an hour to an hour or something like that where you can connect with yourself connect with your higher power do your journaling and all of that kind of stuff do you you know think about that think about what you actually do in the mornings um gosh my instagram's just come back on i have no idea over how much of that's been recorded but we'll see what happens um yeah it's it's just it's just so important to be able to think and be intentional about well, what actually do i do in the mornings how do i feel when i wake up in the mornings am i being intentional am i really giving myself permission to set myself up for success set to set myself up for self-love to set myself up for you know being able to nurture myself and the relationships and the work or whatever I'm doing what are the 20 percent of those things that you do in the morning that are going to nurture those things you know because there's to be honest with you there's so much ways different ways that people do self-care but not every every self-care tool is right for everybody so the difference is not just taking you know what what um what other people say but to really test out the different things and see what actually works for you what are the things that actually make you feel good about yourself in the morning you know so think about that what do you do in the, in the morning what do you do on a weekly basis what do you do on a, on a daily basis that actually really does nurture your your well-being what are those 20% write them down 
write them down and be really clear about being intentional about that 20%. And if you're not, you know, if you f keep falling off the wagon, it's important that you find the time to, to kind of put that back into your, into your schedule. And that's the, that's the stuff what the second one is about. The second one is, you know, how do you spend your time? You know, what are the 20%, what, what is the, 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 the um, 20% of the time that you spend? What are the, what do you do during those activities that actually, you know, that make the rest of the day that contribute to the 80% of your success of that, that particular day? I know for me, it's setting myself up in the morning. If I don't, um, I notice that when I do my journaling or my, my recovery step work or just you know, write down my thoughts or, you know, write, look at my, um, meditation books or what, you know, whatever it is that I, that I choose to do in the morning, depending on how I'm feeling. If I have that nurturing space in the morning, 30 minutes to an hour, I have so much more of a better day. I have so much more of a, of a better day because I feel more focused. I feel calm. Um, you know, I feel more like I've nurtured myself. I've prioritised my self care first instead of just. I notice that I can just get really, really irritable and annoyed if I just dive out. But you know, if my daughter knocks on the door and I dive out of bed and start getting on with stuff, I I feel resentful before I've even done anything. You know, I feel resentful before I've even done anything. But when I actually do take the time to focus on what I need to do during the day and think about what my needs are during the day, check in with my body. How do I feel inside my body? Do I feel anxious? Do I, does it, do I feel physical pain? Um, do I feel depressed? Do I feel low, low? You know, all that kind of stuff. Do I feel like I want to connect? Do I want solid? You know, when I'm sort of checking in with myself, that is a really, that's, that's a 20% of the day that's, well, that's really going to help me make the choices that I need to do for the rest of the day that's going to nurture me. Because at the end of the day, that, that time that I spend in the morning which is an important 20%, it's going to help me understand what my needs are. And if you don't know what your needs are, then you can't take any action. You have to take You have to be able to understand what your needs are in order to be able to take any action. Um, and it's, it can be really hard to do that, you know, over this last couple of weeks when I was down with this flu, you know, there was this kind of battle going on. It's like, oh, I've got so much that I need to be getting on with. But then there was the other part of me that's just like, well, you need to practice what you preach number one and number two you ain't going to be no good to anybody if you think you can just soldier on and get on with the, what you need to get on with and 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 just you know that's not going to work either i had to make that decision to just surrender to slowing down just to surrender to um being unwell so that i could and i understood what my needs are my needs were that i needed to rest my needs were that i needed to sleep my needs were is that my, my body couldn't get up and run around and do things I, I just couldn't do it so I literally had to surrender to what my body was was asking me to do which is just to take better care of myself and allow other people to take care of me and that was really hard to let other people look after me because I'm so used to kind of being the caretaker um I found it really hard to let other people take care of me but because I understood what my needs are and because I understood um the importance of practicing what I preach I had to I was able to have that conversation with myself and just allow myself to accept that I just needed to I just needed to let people take other people take care of me and, and just enjoy it enjoy the you know being nurtured so you know be really honest with yourself about how you spend your time where you spend your time are you planning your time you know are you responding or are you reacting um, you know, are you avoiding or are you engaging? Again, this all goes back to understanding what your needs are and then taking action as a result of what you understand what your needs are. So think about your time. Think about the, you know, what, which, which is the best, which is the best 20% of the time during the day that's really going to help you to nurture the rest of the day for me like I said before it is morning time for some people it might be in the evening where you kind of go have a reflection moment everybody's different you know so think about that in terms of time um number three is you know what are the 20 percent of your relationships that nurture you what are the 20 percent of people that are around you that empower you quite often we end up in situations with um, in relationships with people that are just there because we're used to them being there 
or because we don't we feel guilty about not wanting them there um or we think that you know we feel obligated that we should be around certain people you know but are there are you know are those people the 20 percent that are going to empower you that are going to make you feel good about yourself that are going to encourage you that are going to hear you that are going to listen to you when you need them to listen to you is it is it mutual you know is the relationship a mutual exchange of nurturing or is it or do you just end up feeling drained you know are they part of that 80 percent that just suck the living daylights out of you but don't give anything back you know again there are only 20 percent of the people in your circle the people that you hang out with that are good for you or that are going to nurture you that are going to help you to um you know champion your your healing process and it's important for for, for all of us to be clear about that so that we can then change our time, how we spend, change how, who we spend our time with, you know. Um, one of the reasons why it's so important for me to make sure that the workshop is, um, you know, the, the sister circle thing that I do is so nurturing is because I want that space to be part of your 20%. I want, it's important for me to be part of my 20% of, you know, interacting with other, with other sisters, of, um, you know, listening to the meditations and listening to the tools and stuff like that again and again and again of what I need to do to make sure that I am kind of living in a solution and not kind of being stuck in the characteristics of, of you know, of self-hate. That space is so important for that, for, to be in that 20%. So, you know, if you haven't been to the to the Sister Circle, the book club, and you'd like an opportunity to experience it, to, to try it, um, if you go to the link in the bio, heal.juneallen.net, heal.juneallen.net, that's heal.juneallen.net. I am actually giving away the um, the first uh, set of heart work questions. Heart work questions are journal prompts and audios that will help you to start to unpick how you feel about yourself as a, as a, as a woman, um, as a woman of colour, as a black woman. Um, it will just give you an opportunity to start to answer those questions for yourself and you'll get an idea of... There's videos in there like how to use the heart work for the best of your ability, um, why the heart work is important. So, you, you not only do you get all of that stuff, but you also get, you know, the actual questions to kind of get you started and give you a taste of what we do in the actual, um, in, the, in the sister circle. So if you're interested in that, it's absolutely free of charge. Um, yeah, just go to, um, go to the link in the bio, heal and you can get, you can um, sign up for that for free. Yeah, so that's number, uh, Number three, which folks empower you. So number four is t- food. Food is so important. Like food is like, oh, it's so easy to just go in the kitchen and get and eat something when you're hungry, especially when you've got, you know, sometimes when you've got children and you can't be bothered to cook or you're, you know, you're busy, you just can't be bothered. It's so important to think about the 20% of foods that are actually nurturing you. Or, you know, is the, food, is, is the food that you're eating just convenient, you know? And this is so important. This is so important because food is, is going to change how you feel. Food is going to change how you feel. It's not just something that you just kind of, you know, do for the sake of it. I know a lot of us do do that, obviously, when we're busy. But, you know, it's like, it's like you know, if you, you've got you've to start thinking about our, our bodies and our self-care and our food in terms of, just like you would like if you had an expensive car you're not going to go and put you know cooking oil in, in in a in a in a you know in a car um because you know the car's not going to work we have to start making choices for ourselves that are going to nurture our bodies and that you know food love is is self love food love is self love think about you know if you struggle with with food and and um nurturing yourself and you do find yourself eating a lot of rubbish and stuff like that uh, you know look ask yourself the questions like why what is it that you get out of eating that stuff and how do you feel afterwards you know write all this stuff out in your journal what is it that makes you that drives you to do that that drives you to abandon yourself in that way and what you know what what other things can you do what other things can you eat what other support that can you get that's going to help you to make some different choices about about food you know um and is it is it is it stress related 
you know, we know that food and stress is very much correlated. As soon as we get stressed about something, we reach for the chocolate, we reach for the crisp, we reach for all the things that aren't very good for us, which is actually counterproductive because it just increases the stress. <laughs> you know, if you're eating some stuff that's rubbish, it's just going to increase the stress. So it is important to think about the, you know, your relationship with food as it relates to, to, um, to stress. And also, you know, remembering that is the 20% of the food that you eat that is actually going to be nourishing you? And how can you incorporate more of that 20% of the good stuff that you're eating so that you feel better about yourself, so that your body is happier, so that you're not putting yourself at risk of, of um, you know, your body being unhealthy and be getting disease and, and whatever, overweight or whatever it is around food. Um, so yeah, it's so, it's so important to think about that. Hi Liz, thanks for joining, lovely to see you. Um, and the last one, which is number five, is think about media, media, books, um, TV, magazines. What are the 20 percent of the stuff that you ingest in your mind that is going to have that is going to um, contribute to 80 percent of how you feel about yourself? You know, um, so Liz is saying, hi guys, glad to see your face and sing it. Yeah, I am. I'm still not 100%, but, um, oh, sorry about this. Uh, hang on one second. Why is this not working? Okay, sorry about that. I've got a new phone. Um, yeah, so I'm not, she's got, got the call wrong. It says before 30, but anyway, I'll call her back in a minute. Yeah, so um, it is so important to think about the type of media that you're ingesting, the type of media that um, that you're looking at on a daily basis, be it social media or um, magazines, TV, whatever it is, because that stuff is going to have an impact on how you feel about yourself. So think about that 20%. And, and you know, there isn't, there, there is, it's so hard for a lot of us as, as, um, as black people, as people of colour, to you know, to really um, find sometimes, to find things that are nourishing because I, I, uh, I find it hard. I find it really hard because quite often a lot of the stuff that is on TV or in magazines or whatever is got, you know, there's, there's a lot of racism there. A lot of them are, are owned by um, white companies. Um, a lot of them are owned by white companies. Um, and so a lot of that stuff is, is, is not, is going to have an impact on how we feel about ourselves. So that is, that is really hard. But, you know, I tend to counteract a lot of that stuff. I don't have a TV. I tend to watch a lot of my stuff on the internet so I can actually choose, you know, be really intentional about the stuff that I am watching and looking at. You know, I tend to buy magazines and stuff as well that are, that are quite empowering. And, and just to be conscious of my own awareness around how I feel about when I look at social media or magazines or whatever, I think that's the thing. You know, that 20% that's going to nurture you, really be conscious of the things that you are reading that make you feel good about yourself and, and make an, you know, make an effort to indulge more in those things, you know, and unfortunately it is going to be a situation where a lot of the media outlets and stuff are not going to nourish us. They're not, they're, they're part of that 80% that actually destroy who we are. They're part of that 80% that are going to destroy who we are. So again, it's just about being intentional. It's about being really intentional about, you know, how we, how we you know what we look at you know our nourishment going back to what's in the nourishment is not just about what we put in our mouths and what we eat it's also about what we feed our brains what we feed our psyches what we feed our soul so we it's important to do that you know it's important to do that and you know something if you need to have a detox have a detox have it have a, you know have a 24 hour um you know detox from social media or from from watching tv or whatever you know read or go outside or just there's so many other things that you can do um, that's really going to help you to um, just to nurture, nurture who you are, to nurture the space that's going to help you feel better about yourself, you know. So it is important about, you know, that 80-20 rule is so important because you can apply it to so many different things. You can apply it to so many different things. And for those of you that are interested as well, um, just talking about... Um, you know the stress and everything of, of social media and everything like that um i have actually just just created a um a really simple ebook that that gives you 30 different tools 
and that you can use to you know to empower yourself around racial wellness and stuff like that um i do talk about in that ebook i do talk about three principles or three principles of um of racial wellness which i will be talking about that a little bit more next week but there's three different things it's you know you've got to know how to discharge the, the energy out of your body you've got to understand that you need to do reflection and you need to nurture yourself there's three things so this ebook if you go to heal.juneallen.net there's a link there where you can um you, you can get hold of it but there's 30 different ways t- 10 for each principle that's going to help you to um it's going to give you some suggestions on on what you can do to um nurture your your racial wellness some of it is you know specific around cultural nourishment and some of it is not you know it's not necessarily related to cultural identity but just ways for you to manage your feelings and all of that kind of stuff which is really really important so there's 30 there so again if you go to the link heal.junalan.net you can pick up that ebook there so yeah so you know it is so important to remember as well that when you start doing a lot of this stuff start nurture, start doing all the nurturing things that we talk about so much around self-care you know you might actually feel uncomfortable doing those 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 things that are good for you because you're not used to it you're not used to it so you you know it's easier for you to not do it or think oh no is this might not be working because i don't f-, even though this stuff is supposed to be good for me it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good to me so what's important is to remember that just to keep trying different things and to keep keep doing the things that that's suggested because you know there's going to be a, a shift at some level there will be a shift at some point um and you will start feeling better about yourself but you've got to remember that when you stop doing behaviors that have not been good for you for a while there is kind of like a withdrawal process that you need to go through in order to get to you know used to feeling good about the the healthy behaviors so just give yourself time to do that and um, and just be consistent with it and it will it will t- turn itself around. So those are the five things. So let me just go through them again. So the 80-20 rule is all about recognising that there are only 20% of things that you do on a daily basis, 20% of the choices that you make on a daily basis that contribute to 80% of your happiness. So think about things like, you know, what are the nur- number one is what are the nurturing things that you do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? that what are the choices that you make that are that contribute to that what is it what is that 20 percent write that stuff down number two is your time what is the 20 percent of the of the you know what is the best 20 percent of the day that you can choose that is going to help you get the best out of the rest of the day it might be in the morning or it might be in the evening everyone's different but to think about you know the 20 percent of time that you spend nurturing yourself think about how that how you can that that 20 percent is going to really nurture you how that 20 percent is going to really contribute to your success be at work feeling good about yourself and your relationships or whatever think about the 20 percent of that activity that you're doing on a daily basis that's actually contributing to that and if you don't if you feel not very good you know for most of the day then it's time to actually think about or start getting really clear about the things that you can be doing and the time that you can, the 20% of the time that you can spend to, do, to nurture that. Number three is thinking about the, the, um, who are the 20% of the people that are around you that nurture you, who are the 20% of the people that make you feel good about yourself, that listen to you, that hear you. Maybe it's a therapist, maybe it's the, the, um, the sister circle, it might be me, it might be your mentor or your business coach or whoever it is, it might be another support group. Think about the people that are in your circle because it's only going to be 20% of the people that are going to help you, that are going to help you with your healing path. So be be clear about who those people are and make a conscious effort to spend more time with them. Number four is food. You know, food is love. Food is, you know, food is nurturing. Food is, food is, is, is your higher power. Food is, people take for granted food so much and so it is important for you to think about what is the 20 percent of foods that you eat on a daily basis that are nourishing you and what's the 80 percent that's just that's just you know not making you feel good about yourself making you put on weight making you feel depressed you know how many you know hands up if you you, you know sugar and all of that stuff that you know is not good for you but you still eat it you know have those conversations with yourself you know if you really want to step into the solution You've got to think about those things, uh, you know, that what is the 20% of those things that you're doing that is, that is you know, that is not, um, that is not helping you. 
you know so that's number four food and the last one number five is media media that's books tv social media whatever it is you know that is going to have a huge contribution to how you feel about yourself it's going to have a huge contribution to how you feel about yourself as a, as a black person as a person of color you know what is it what is is there even 20 percent of the stuff that you look at this net that nurtures you and if not why not if not where can you find that stuff? And if it's not available to you can, are you, can you contribute to it? This is one of the reasons why I do the work that I do, because I want there to be a safe space to be able to have these conversations um, without, without apology. Um, and for the conversations to be truthful, but also nourishing for people, you know? So everybody has the opportunity to learn something, but also feel encouraged, feel inspired and understand that, you know, I spent a lot, a long time, you know, in my life feeling depressed about different things and feeling, you know, feeling a lot of shame about being a black woman and all of that kind of stuff. But over the years, I've kind of built up my own systems. I've built up my own set of tools. I've, you know, I realise, I know now what I need to do in order to um, nurture myself, in order to feel better about myself. So, um, and I, I, sometimes I forget, sometimes I have moments where I just feel bad about myself and I just think, oh God, you know, but then, you know, if I go to a meeting or make a phone call or whatever, I, I know what I need to do to pick up, pick back up where I left off in order to, to, you know, to continue the, the healing process. So those are the five that, you know, that's the 80, 20 rule and the, and the five things. So if you really, really want to start living intentionally inside the 80, 20 rule, you know, you've just got to focus on the energy, the people, the places, the things that are going to bring you peace. Focus on, you know, be honest about the 20% of people that are in your life and make, be intentional about those, about bringing more of those things into your daily life. That, that, that's a really great place to start. That's a really, really great place to start. You know, so has anybody got any other questions or anything about the 80-20 rule? Or any other comments and stuff. I hope this been, has it been helpful. Just drop a drop an em, drop an emoji um, in the comments if you found what I've you know shared today useful. So any of you that are interested as well in the in the uh, workshop that's going to be happening next Saturday, don't forget to um, click the link in the bio heal.juneallen.net. That's heal.juneallen.net. Heal.juneallen.net. So thank you all so much as well for all your messages as well. I've got so many messages from all of you from being unwell and stuff like that and um, some of you that I've you know I have replied personally and I'm going to be doing some more this afternoon because I've got loads of my <coughs> my messages in my um, my Facebook in, inbox as well is, is full of messages from people so I'll be replying to those as well today so yeah if you've not got any other questions thank you so much for joining me today if you know anybody that might be interested in the stuff that I've shared today share it with them tag them um yeah, if you've got any other questions or anything about it, then you can always send me a DM. So thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your journey today. And I will see you next time. I'll probably be on again. Probably be Saturday, actually. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I am feeling a lot better. Thank good, thank goodness. And I'm grateful for um, the space that I've been able to, to, you know, to nurture myself and get well. Um, but yeah, so it's been good to come back on today, even though I'm still not 100%, um, and just, just share with you all. So thank you all so much for joining, and I will see you next time. All right, take care. Bye.